Um, hello, everyone. My name is Suba Ross, and I'm Director of Admissions for Tulane University School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. And to welcome to today's webcast. Our guests today are going to speak to us about schistosomiasis, a tropical disease. So would you guys like to introduce yourselves and chat a little bit about yourself? Yes, thank you. Uh, so my name is Pedro uh, Mochilo. I'm a biomedical uh, I'm a biomedical and I'm a master's student back in Brazil. And now I'm here in Tulane University to perform some experiments to finish my master's degree. Excellent. And thank you for the invitation. You're welcome, Dr. Barbosa. Yeah, I'm Lucio Barbosa. I'm a professor at the Bayou School of Medicine and Public Health. Uh, I'm also a collaborator researcher in Fiocruz, working with Dr. Mittermeier Hayes and Dr. Uh, Ronald Blanton, and I'm actually Pedro's advisor for his masses, and thank you for having us. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about schistosomiasis. Can you explain to our viewers exactly what is this tropical disease, how is it acquired, and how does it affect the human body? So, uh, to first understand a little bit of schistosomiasis, we have to understand that it's a, a disease that it's endemic on the tropics. So uh, it's endemic on the uh, South America, in Africa, Asia. Uh, and to better understand how we can acquire, uh, people acquire uh, this uh, intestinal parasite, uh, we have to understand the cycle, uh, uh, the life cycle yes. uh, of the schistosomiasis that starts uh, with the eggs that are present on the human stool. Uh, those uh, this tool goes to, to the water for bad sanitation, for example. Uh, the eggs, uh, uh, they, they change the life cycle, uh, go into a snail, that is the, the first host that they have, that they have. Uh, and then they uh, come back, they, they just get out of the snail and they affect the, the human by penetration on the, on the skin, for example. Yes. Okay. Um, it's a really potentially severe disease that can lead to death. I mean, the basic key, the, the basic, the adults actually don't cause many things, but the eggs that they produce, the most of them they get, they don't go out in the stool, as Pedro was saying. Most of them, they actually get caught within the body and they go uh, through the uh, bloodstream. Most of them get stuck in the liver some go to the spleen. Uh, majority of them, they obstruct the blood flow through the capillaries, basically. And this actually increases the, uh, the blood pressure, the, the pressure. And so new veins are formed. They're uh, varices, varices, and they can go around the esophagus and sometimes people can bleed out to death. Uh, this, as it goes to the bloodstream, and can go anywhere, basically. So, if, if the individual gets one in the spinal cord, it will develop the paralysis, and and most, yeah, and it's potentially. And what's the cure for this? It's a simple treatment, actually. There's two drugs uh, now available. Uh, they are. Uh, available in the World Health Organization, oxaminikin and Prozopontol. Prozopontol is the one that is chosen, and it's really simple. It's a simple uh, single dose, and the individual takes based on the, the, his weight, okay. and it's pretty effective. Okay. Well, it sounds pretty threatening. <laughs> yeah. It is. So let's talk a little bit about the project that you have come from your country to work here in New Orleans mm -hmm. with the chairman of mm -hmm. the Department of Tropical Medicine, Dr. Ronald Blanton. Can you describe the project that you're both working on? Yeah, so my, uh, even though Dr. Blanton, he's, start, he's, work, he's working with Stosomasis since 1984, I got into the project in uh, 2009 during my PhD, uh, yeah, my PhD program. Uh, my advisor was Dr. Mittermeier Hayes, and they, they, he's the one who's been working with Dr. Blanton since uh, '84. So 
Uh, we started in 2009 and the main goal for the project was to evaluate how the uh, population structure, the parasite population structure would change after repeated rounds of treatment. So back then and at that project at that time, we investigated two different settings. One of them was a rural area where population around a thousand individuals, uh, where we got five or six different parasitological surveys. Uh, and the other one was in the urban settings in Salvador, which is our city, which is the fourth largest city in Brazil. So it's a big metropolis and it's a completely uh, urban setting. Uh, to summarize the results, because these results will actually be uh, the start to the new project. So we got, in the rural area, we got the prevalence down from 45%, 42 to 45%, down to three, excellent, something like this. And in the urban setting, we got something like 25%. We were only able back then to do one, one survey because there was an infrastructure change in the area that we are not able to go back. Uh, evaluating the population structure and using population uh, genetics, we got a few interesting results, uh, such as the stability of the population of uh, schistosomiasis population over the years. Uh, we got to see that there was no uh, host selection and no selection at all. But the main result, the most interesting result, is that in the uh, rural area that we got down to the 3%, we were able to see that we decreased the effective population uh, size down to 500 or so. In uh, conservation specific, uh, conservation biology, that would mean that in, in normal animals, I mean, that would mean that the populations tend to uh, be extinct which in our case is good. I mean, we want to get the parasite over to be eradicated. And we didn't have a chance to go back yet, but that's a new plan. Uh, what motivated the new project that we are currently working in is that we, it's described everywhere that the population, uh, the prevalence go down to around 5%, okay. as, in, as we found in three or something, right. and it never goes away. It, stay, it tends to stay, it tends to persist. And at this project, we are trying to uh, investigate what are the features that makes them makes the parasite persist in the area. So we have a few hypotheses, and we are working in two urban communities, two urban uh, slums communities, uh, two thousand people, and we're doing a survey each year in in all of them using uh, investigating two thousand people. Uh, at this project with Dr. Blanton, which is one of the PIs in and Dr. Guillermo Hayes, uh, we, the, uh, him and uh, we were investigating, oh, we got different, different uh, projects out of it. Uh, we were investigating also the snails throughout the city. We were trying to investigate uh, these two areas and we got the this project evaluating the urban gardens. Uh, well, it sounds very necessary and needed yeah. in the area. Yeah, okay, so, and my master project uh, was born from one of those research, uh, as Dr. Barbosa was saying. In 2011, uh, there was a survey on Salvador, uh, and uh, our team just saw that in one small area, there was a group of agriculture workers in urban gardens uh, that has that uh, they have a really higher prevalence than the, the, the overall need of the, of the work and of the city uh, for schistosomiasis. And, um, and then we, just, uh, we came back six years later on 2017 when we joined, joined the team uh, and we saw that 100% of them were infected. So uh, one of our questions were, uh, what if this is a reality in another uh, uh, urban gardens and another workers uh, are suffering from the same situation? So that's pretty much our aim uh, uh, on my master's. 
uh, is to uh, evaluate the, the prevalence of trisosomiasis on uh, urban garden workers in the city of Salvador. And with the uh, population genetics, understand uh, how, uh, how is it happening, this, uh, this infection? Are they coming from other cities, another endemic areas uh, from Brazil, or are they uh, getting the, the schistosomiasis in, on those work sites? So with the genetics, we'll have the opportunity to, to have those results. Yeah. Well, very meaningful and very needed research, sure. So I'd also like to ask you about your experience working here at Tulane. Tulane is one of the few schools of tropical medicine and I mean, guests throughout the whole world. So um, how is it to come from your country and be able to work with our, your faculty mentor here and work in our facility? Yeah, so far it's been really good. And, uh, we, we had, this is a really, really, really short visit. We were here for four weeks and actually leaving this Friday. Uh, and it has been actually really good. All of the people that we met, they were extremely helpful and it's all of the equipment were really, really good and all of the facilities, everybody was treating us really well. And actually most of the work we couldn't be done without these people that we met. Oh, very nice. Yeah. yeah and talking about uh, all the other facilities of the Tulane University, uh, when we met the uptown campus and uh, all the system to come back mm. here to the downtown campus, it was really, uh, really nice to see like how big is the university. Yeah. Yes. And it's funny, uh, we got to the uh, ST, STMH, the conference? Yes, the conference. Top Medicine Conference. And it's amazing that how many people are from Tulane? We yes. met a, a lot yeah. of them. And That's true. That's, well, yeah, Dr. Blanton was introducing us to everybody that we met. And That's it was true. quite a lot of people. Well, it could be because we are the oldest mm -hmm. school of public health and tropical yeah. medicine. And that's how we got our start was the study of malaria and, and yellow fever. Because mm -hmm. everyone in the city was dying because of the mosquitoes and yellow fever. And we started the school of tropical medicine mm -hmm. and hygiene in 1912. So you have decades and decades of yeah. graduates from tropical medicine throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Um, well, I have my master's of science in public health in tropical medicine. So that's what my master's degree was in. And I found it absolutely fascinating. Since maybe many of our viewers are considering study in tropical medicine, do you have any advice for a prospective student? Well, to study in tropical medicine, well, for me, it's, uh, it's quite amazing. It's uh, really important and it's, you know, you have to be prepared for a lot of things. It's uh, it's something that is it's striking lots of people and lots of people in the poor areas. Uh, it's uh, it gives you an opportunity to understand and to understand everything that it has about that particular disease. What I mean is uh, sometimes we have a, a, a simple idea of how this disease work and what to do to eradicate or to eliminate that disease. But as you go in and you try to do to apply all of those things, it's, it doesn't work that way. But you have to understand, and that's what it makes fascinating for me, because you have to understand all of the local reality. And sometimes what you apply to this area, it won't work to other ones. For instance, the schistosomiasis, is, uh, it's, we all know what to do to get rid of schistosomiasis. We have to prepare, have to do a, a basic sanitation, basically. It's simple, but it doesn't happen. We still have 200 million people affected around the world. And in Brazil, the latest numbers were something about 10 million people with 30 to 40 million people at risk of getting infected, but we don't. And we you have to dive in to that place and understand different different positions. It has political issues, it has 
uh, economical issues. You have a lot of things. So, it, it, so for, for me, that makes it fascinating yeah. that you have to understand all of this in order to tackle uh, that problem, uh, that issue. All right. So it's not only those, it's the culture yes. and the um, infrastructure mm -hmm. that affects your work. It's easy to yeah. cure, but there's yes. there's so limitations. For me, it's fascinating to, to, to go and you have to couple different different uh, uh, perspectives, public health perspective, political perspective, cultural perspective, all of this. You have to combine all of that to get really understanding of the chocolate medicine or for any of the chocolate diseases. Pedro, do you have any advice? Yeah, uh, I, as a, a personal uh, experience, uh, what I can say is that uh, working with tropical medicine is something that uh, it's fascinating because in the first place you can work with a lack of knowledge uh, inside the health area. You can work with immunology, pathology, entomology. Uh, so you have the genetics, so you can choose like the, the really different areas but to do uh what for me is the aim that is to solve problems it's mm -hmm. uh not um i'm gonna quote we just stay uh, just publish papers mm -hmm. just uh uh generate data that's really important too but you have to solve that uh, uh you have to give answers to the society just like uh, dr barbosa said uh yeah, it's a really different background that we have uh, from our daily daily life to go to places that people suffer with the those tropical diseases uh, so it's to understand that behind every every sample every uh, mosquito or every bug that you're studying like they are affecting uh, they have an impact on millions of people uh, all over the world so that's for me what uh, what you have to to know uh, and how you have to think to work with tropical medicine and the best advice is to have to be prepared for anything that can happen. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're li living in different realities. And sometimes you plan for something in the lab, you know, you s sit with your whole team and you prepare to that situation that you go in and it's quite different. So you have to be prepared and aware. Should adapt. <laughs> yeah. should adapt to all the situations. Right. So you enjoy that it's very interdisciplinary, as you mm -hmm. stated. Yeah. And it sure. sounds like it's very rewarding mm -hmm. as, as yeah. well. Yeah, you can you your work your work will affect the lives of people and especially of people that need the most, because most of these diseases they are uh, related to poverty. And the majority of them, all of Basically, all of the paras parasitic ones are all related to uh, poverty, and you have a chance to actually matter to the person's life and, and save all lives. Of that, yeah, and all yeah. of that population. And uh, as uh, we have this different background, uh, we have a lot of stories of oh, going yes. on the field and things like this. But uh, the thing that you have to take care of people is like uh, one of one of the. Uh, the things like the feedback that you have to have with the information, with right. the education. Uh, you have to, uh, sometimes we have stories that uh, you go in the field and you say to the people, hey, you, you cannot play inside this water. Uh, you cannot, uh, and the, the person say like, oh, okay. And then the person get infected. Oh, were you playing in the water? No, I was not playing. But I just entered to uh, get like the ball because I was playing soccer. Uh, so you have to really enforce that. Like, no, you cannot play and you cannot even touch that water for exactly. a while. So that's the, the, uh, all the, uh, level that you have to yeah, uh, that's the worry that we have. Yeah. Right, to have. right. You have to, yeah. It's not a really simple, oh no, I just told them what they have to, no, you have to really get, <laughs> really explain, really yes. explain and yeah. get this feedback to, to make understand. the communication yeah. happen. Yeah, well, anything interesting. So many stories that and it is one people are not taking drugs, the the, the pill. Uh, there are some people who won't participate because of the political party that the mayor of the city belongs to, because mm -hmm. it it doesn't support. And we have to talk to the person. Okay, doesn't matter. We're not political parties. We have nothing to do right. with political. 
stuff and but the person is no no i'm not going to help that mayor and i'm trying to talk to the person he doesn't care <laughs> you're the one sick so there's so matter. much education yes, involved. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so many different levels you, you have to it's good we're saying you have to really be careful and of what you say and coupling the both ideas we plan in the lab okay so we're going to treat everybody it's going to be simple but then you have somebody who won't take the drug because of political party mm -hmm. there is somebody that heard from somebody 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 that the pill will kill you so the person put the drug in the mouth and then spit it out or never take it mm -hmm. and all of this actually contributes to the persistence of the parasite in the yes. area because yes. he will remain uh, shedding eggs in the stool and he will remain infecting the place mm -hmm. and it's Yeah. It's a battle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, gentlemen, I have one last question for you. And uh, it's probably your first time in New Orleans. I'm wondering, what do you think about our city? Did you have any time to stop research and go out and visit the city a little bit? We, we did. <laughs> we always find a, uh, we try to find a time to go. We went to the French Quarter. Uh, we went to the Frenchman Street, the, which they were quite amazing. Lots of people actually it reminds us of Salvador sometimes yeah. at so many levels in New Orleans. Uh, Salvador is known also by the food, the well, all of the African uh, uh, background. Yeah, so the food, the music, the people it's it's a while, it, it's, yeah. it's really cool, and, and like that reminds so much that well, we're known. And in Salvador, it should be like warm people. And I felt it here in New Orleans. Like yeah. people, they're uh, always talking to, to each other. Yeah. It's like yes. you're in the middle of the street, someone, hey, how are you doing? And they start like, a conversation. Oh, okay. They start a conversation. And that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's really good. I feel uh, some joy uh, mm -hmm. in the people. Yeah. So it's a, uh, uh, that's New Orleans is a city that uh, I have to come back with a little bit more time. And, uh, yes. and I would recommend yeah, like yeah. my friends and family to come here and visit. It's really, really nice city. That's great to hear. Well, we definitely appreciate the work that you're doing here and coming for collaboration with our faculty members and having you in our facility. So and thank you for joining us today and for giving this information to our viewers. So thank you, Dr. Thank Rosa, you. and thank you, Pedro. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you, everyone, for thank joining you. us.